Good evening and welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. I'm your host, Thomas McNulty. And today's episode is called Great Women Writers. And I've chosen 10 writers that I return to time and time again because of the quality of their work. I know that in the past I've concentrated a lot in previous episodes on a lot of male writers, although I have covered uh, women writers in the past, such as the great Jude Devereaux. And there's also an episode out there devoted to Mary Shelley, by the way. If you haven't watched that, be sure to watch it. That's a scary one. Uh, but, but today we're going to be a little more diverse. I've chosen 10 women writers that I think are the best of the best. These are my favorites, among my favorites. I have many more, which we'll get to in later episodes. So let's start out with one of the all-time greats, which is The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. I read this book in college years and years ago. Don't ask the year, okay? It was a long time ago. And Edith Wharton, I have notes here. Yes, 1862, 1937 was her lifespan. This is one of the most interesting and fascinating books I've ever read. I own multiple copies. This is a more recent edition um, that was put out. I think this is the Barnes & Noble edition. So Edith Wharton, this has the greatest ending to a, a romance novel you'll ever read anywhere. Fantastic writing. This is Victorian era. Um, so Edith Wharton is, is another one of the great literary geniuses of the last century. So be sure to check that out. And... Then we're going to go to the collected stories of Catherine Ann Porter. Now, this collection is the, uh, I think this is the complete stories. This includes a novella that she wrote called Noon Wine, which was the first piece of writing of hers that I had read. And it's a magnificent piece of work. Highly recommended. Be sure to check it out. I'm not going to give you out plot details. If you're just interested, you're a reader, okay? You're interested in quality writing. Catherine Ann Porter cannot be ignored. Fantastic. Now, Catherine Ann Porter was 1890 to 1980, a more recent vintage she passed away. Um, but this is, she also, I don't know if she did many novels. She might have done Ship of Fools, but um, her she's basically known as a short story writer. Okay, so here they are. You can easily find her short stories on Amazon. So check out Catherine Ann Porter. Edith Wharton, Catherine Ann Porter are in my library. And then we come to another favorite, okay, Flannery O'Connor. A Good Man is Hard to Find, and a few other stories are included in here. Flannery O'Connor, her date of birth here is um, 1915 to 1964, and there are other things that she wrote that are worth reading, so I just grabbed, I just grabbed this one. This is probably one of her more famous novels, is A Good Man is Hard to Find. So be sure to check out Flannery O'Connor. Can't live without her. And then we have another one, okay? We're really getting into the good stuff here today. Carson McCullers, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter, which, along with A Good Man is Hard to Find by Flannery O'Connor, these are these are really classics of literature uh, you'll find here. So Carson McCullers was 1917, 1967. A couple of these writers passed away in the 60s. Um, they didn't necessarily write a lot, but what they wrote is high quality. So Carson McCullers, fantastic. I think I mentioned Carson McCullers in another episode. If I hadn't, I'm sure I will again. Uh, Carson McCullers is one of my favorites. Shirley Jackson, here's a new edition, which is advertising the, you know, the Haunting of Hill House television show, which, by the way, I have not seen. So I don't know if it's any good. I'm sure it is. You know, I don't watch a lot of television unless it's an old Western or an old monster movie. <laughs> really, I, I watch very little television. Um, no kidding, really? <laughs> With all these books laying around, you think I have time and all the writing I'm doing? But Shirley Jackson, if you haven't read Shirley Jackson, I know a lot of you have. You're familiar with the lottery. Um, Shirley Jackson, 1916, 1965, another one that passed away in the 60s. So kind of a rough decade there for, for losing some of the great writers uh, of the last century, our time. Shirley Jackson is a standard. You know, Again, I'm talking about books here and authors that have produced work that's considered the highest literary quality, and I agree, they are. Um, let's get into some really interesting genre stuff, though, by some women writers. The Storm Lord by Tanith Lee. Boy, this is such a great book. And this was a daw. 
I've talked about DAW before in other episodes. You have the yellow spine and you have the logo up here. And uh, this is one of many novels that she wrote. I think she wrote at least 100 novels, something like that. I don't know how many hundreds of short stories the great Tanith Lee wrote. She's one of those authors, when I see a paperback uh, that's in better condition than the one I have, I buy it. That's how I feel about Tanith Lee. Great. This is a great fantasy novel, by the way. So we're into some genre work now. Whereas some of these others might be considered contemporary novelists for their time, um, this is genre work. Uh, so this is fantasy. I'm all in favor of that, as you know. I read everything. Um, so anyways, so Tanith Lee was 1947 to 2015. She only passed away a few years ago. I remember reading about it, and I was quite sad because she's such a wonderful writer, and we are no longer be blessed with her fantastic new novels if she should... If she had lived, I'm sure she would have published many more. Um, what a great writer she is. And, and so you can find her books everywhere. And another favorite, Andre Norton, Spell of the Witch World. Now, this is another DAW. So I've talked about DAW in other episodes, the yellow spine, the logo. This, by the way, is DAW number one. This is for you DAW collectors out there, and I know there are many. Um, this is the very first DAW book. This was also uh, one of the first in her Witch World series. Um, and that series was really good. Andre Norton, whose real name was Alice Mary Norton, 1912 to 2005. Again, uh, she passed away just uh, years ago, just a few years ago. Um, I have dozens and dozens of Andre Norton's books on my shelf. When I first read Andre Norton, like many people, I thought Andre was a man, you know, and that was probably intentional on her part so that people didn't confuse the two. It is an unfortunate fact that there are then, as there are now, people that um, don't read women writers because they foolishly believe that the quality isn't as good as their male counterparts, and that's complete horse apple, okay? That's horse apples. Um, these writers I'm showing you today are the best of the best, right? This is high-class stuff. This is the best of the best, all right? So Andre Norton, I have dozens of paperbacks, great fantasy some science fiction just an incredible talent i mean incredible so you've got to check out andre norton she remains in print all of these authors by the way that i'm talking about today remain in print even though they most of them have passed away and another favorite here is c.l moore Jarel of jore which is a fantasy novel and this was published by i don't know what it was ace i believe and now C.L. Moore is, uh, was married to Henry Cutner, who is a Pulp Fiction writer of great renown that I haven't covered yet in this video series, but I'm sure I will at some point in the future. Um, C.L. Moore was a stunning, stunningly brilliant writer. So again, like these others, when I see these paperbacks here, I buy them, all right? So this is a pretty good copy of this. And um, so if you can find... C.L. Moore, you're not going to go wrong. She is also frequently reprinted. All right, add this stuff to your bookcase, my friends. This is where it's all at. Now, those authors um, have passed on. They're no longer with us. But I have two authors I want to talk about today that are still with us. And the first one we're going to talk about is Alice Hoffman, who is one of my favorite modern contemporary novelists. And this is her recent book, which is called The World That We Knew. And it's not, an e it's not easy to see. The cover is horrible. Um, we're going to talk about the cover in a minute. So it's a black cover with uh, silver on it. And I positioned the blinds in, in the house here so that you can kind of pick up the light. We'll pick up the silver a little bit so you can actually see the cover. Um, and I, this, was, this is within the last year, and I consider it one of the most important novels I've read in the last couple of years. Uh, it does deal with World War II, um, timely material, though. Uh, her talent as a writer is superb. Uh, again, I think she's a genius. I really think Alice Hoffman is a genius. The first book of hers that I ever read was Seventh Heaven, uh, which I have in paperback in the other room, uh, somewhere along with other books that she's written. This this is a, a really... a gut-wrenching but fascinating wonderful book to read and look into this please please look into alice hoffman the world that we, that we knew i don't think it received enough attention and this book was published by um simon and schuster 
uh, who put this horrible cover on it, which I'm going to talk about again in a minute in relation to this next author. So set this aside for now. We're going to come back to my thoughts on that. And then finally, Anne Rice, the great Anne Rice. What a wonderful author she is. This is one of her recent books, Prince Lestat and the Realms of Atlantis, which is part of her famous vampire series. This is one of the best in the vampire series, by the way. I did post a review on my blog, Dispatches from the Last Outlaw, about this book. Uh, incredible piece of writing from Anne Rice. I've been a fan of hers for a long time. You'll note the cover. All right, looks almost identical to the cover from Alice, Alice Hoffman's book. Different publisher. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, this was published by um, Alfred Knopf, all right? And they're using the same style of marketing, all right? A little more blue on the Alice Hoffman than the, uh, than the Anne Rice. But the same, the same uh, technique is being used here, which is a dark cover with silver lettering, and that is an injustice to these authors. These are horrible, horrible covers. So I'm calling out these publishers publicly, and I'm telling you, you have misrepresented these authors with these cheaply done, juvenile, amateurish covers. All right, everyone that's ever taken a class in design knows that black, silver, and red don't mix. You can, the eye cannot fall on them. The reason you can see the silver on these two covers right now is because I have positioned intentionally the blinds of the window in front of me to reflect off that cover so that you can see it on camera. And it took a few minutes to arrange that. At a glance, in a bookstore, you cannot read what this, you cannot read that, all right? You can't, you can't see it, it's just horrible. Cheaply done, cheaply done. Now, I see a lot of this from major New York publishers. This is just stupendous. Stupendous in the sense that they're stupid, all right? Um, the publishers have done a disservice to these authors by not marketing these books correctly. These are two masterful writers. These are two of the greatest living authors ever, right now, in our era, in our time, and they are being subjected to these really kindergarten covers by the marketing departments of their publishers. It's true, you cannot judge a book by its cover, but guess what, publishers? You can sell more if you put a good cover on it, okay? Especially name recognition authors such as this. Another one that I see frequently, in addition to the dark covers with the silver lettering, I see black with red letters, and that's so horrendously stupid. It's unbelievable. Uh, I mean, everyone that, take a design class. What's the first thing they tell you? It needs to jump out. You need to be able to see it. The eye needs to pick up on it. All right, so there's my rant on the problems with modern design on covers of these great, wonderful authors. Yes, I said it before. I'll say it again in conclusion. You can't judge a book by its cover, but by God, you will sell more copies if you have a good cover. And again, Alice Hoffman, Alice Hoffman and Rice, they deserve your attention. They deserve the best representation by their publisher they can, they can get, and they're not getting it. So there you go. I know that Anne Rice and Alice Hoffman, whom I've never met, by the way, um, may disagree with that. Uh, and I perfectly respect that they, you know, they have to work with these people. One last thing I wanted to mention that the Anne Rice is a signed copy that I ordered through Barnes & Noble. I hope you can see that there a little bit. Um, and I have a few of those I've ordered through Barnes & Noble. I've never met her. Um, her public appearances are pandemonium. You know, it's just, it's just pandemonium. So um, I hope someday I get to shake her hand and thank her for all the wonderful literature that she's contributed to the world. And Alice Hoffman, you as well, my friend. Long distance, tip of the stets into Alice Hoffman and Anne Rice, who are currently working hard and writing wonderful books for all of us to enjoy. Once again, thank you for checking in to McNulty's Book Corral. I hope you took notes on these recommendations because there are some fantastic writers I just talked about. Uh, stay well, stay happy, feed your brain, read a book. <laughs>